the Federal Reserve governor positions are long-term positions, right? They're 14-year terms. Um, and the Senate uh, has to uh, confirm these people. So this is a, a function of the consent and advise uh, function that is set forth in the Constitution. The Federal Reserve governors uh, must be confirmed by, uh, by the Senate. So the Senate has significant oversight, and there are a lot of questions that have been swirling around the Fed nominees, and uh, the attention really now focuses on what the, what the Senate is going to do with them. If you were voting on Kane and on Moore, how would you vote? Well, it's, not, it's actually not my vote, uh, but it, it, I'll tell you what I think the, the Senate should look for um, in looking at both of them. And I think they're going to want to look um, at some of the prior statements that have been said. Um, you know, if, if a nominee wants to abolish the Federal Reserve, if, an, if, a, if a nominee wants to return us to a gold standard, um, if a nominee feels that tax cuts have long and sustained benefits mm -hmm. for the economy, all of those, all of those kinds of uh, prior statements, I think, are fair game for the Senate to look at. And the Senate's going to look at it really in light of um, economic conditions, the conditions that the senators know about in their own economies. Because, of course, there's a direct link between what monetary policy does and the economic prosperity that, uh, that, that uh, the Fed is supposed to be bringing about in, in every state, in every corner of every state. So that's going to be the, the question that the senators will face. In, in terms of that and bringing it back to those comments from Vice Chair Clarida just now, I mean, he said that he sees monetary policy in a good place, the economy in a good place. He seemed to pretty cautiously upbeat uh, in that interview. Do you agree with him? I, you know, Morgan, I think you're right. I think it was a very up, I think he was very upbeat on the economy. I thought, I thought he played the economy up. I thought he, he put down, he sort of, he sort of downplayed the uh, potential interference that, that, that the Fed is feeling from the White House. So you saw, so you saw both. Um, you, you heard him a really downplay uh, some of the slowdown in economic demand. I thought he parried some of Sarah's questions uh, quite effectively on, on questions of global demand, which has slowed down. And she pointed out that the IMF has produced a lower outlook. Um, how was he to respond to that? She pointed out also that um, that, uh, that, that, that the Fed had indeed done a hike as recently as December. What, what would that mean if things had been so upbeat? And in March, of course, and we now see this in the March minutes, um, the Fed has indicated a, a, a slowdown, a step down in growth. So last year we were at 3%. The Fed is projecting 2.1 this year. That is a significant step down. We also heard from Mr. Clarida saying in 95 and 98 the way that the Fed took out an insurance policy and cut yeah. before the data perhaps turned south. Do you think that is likely? What, what, what possibility would you it say could that be, is? It could be part of it, Wilf. I mean, I think the Fed likes to be ahead of any significant downturn. So it does that in its kind of risk management function or its insurance function. It tries to preempt, so to speak, with a small move, something that it could that could come along. And yeah, that that could be that could be part of the thinking that's going on here. And then, you know, you also heard him talk about this play, this point of patience, right? Mm -hmm. Being a point that we shouldn't look at in terms of signaling a downturn, but we should look at it at a point of like, hey, now we're at we're at neutral, so let's stay at neutral until something changes. That's a different kind of twist, I would say, on the communication on the economy. Sarah, great to see you as always. Thanks for joining us. Great being here.